Hi everybody and welcome to the data cleaning part of the video course. Now, in the very first step, we have to concatenate or to merge our 10 data sets. As you can remember, in the last section, we have invested a lot of time to extract and to create the 10 different data sets for the cities and for the states. And then the actual part is the data cleaning process. Okay, as you can remember, we have to make our data database readable. Okay, we will use the PostgreSQL database in the next section in order to be able to answer real life questions. Okay, and the foundation is actually a cleaned and a standardized um, data frame. Okay, so we have to put the data in a standardized uh, format okay and this is why we have to do a few different steps along the data cleaning process so here i've split up all the steps or let's say the whole process in seven different steps okay first of all we have to start uh, checking for the missing data so as you can remember we don't always have access to the data we want to extract okay maybe in a few different pages the data is just not present and we get back an empty string and here i would like to show you how we can handle this situation afterwards we ne also need to handle um, duplicate entries and we have also to reset and to change the um, index or the indices because once we modify or change the data frame or once we start updating the data frame um, it always can be that the index is also changing and here we need to reset it. Okay, this will be the first part. Afterwards, we have to take a look at the price column. Here we have to change actually the name and we also have to cut off a few uh, string elements. In this example, we have to cut off the dollar sign and the comma. Again, we need to standardize this data somehow and this is actually um, a part of that same applies for the area column here we also have to do a few changes and also regarding the bedrooms data and the bathrooms data again we need to cut off the string elements from the entries and in this example um, actually i want to show it to you a little bit later but now what this means is for example if we have um, as an entry um, a studio, I want to change it um, and it should be that we have one room, okay? So this all, all, everything should be standardized. That means I just want to have inside the bedrooms column. Um, I don't want to have a string element like a studio. I want to have integers like um, one room or two, three, four, five, six, seven rooms, okay? And this is for simplicity reasons why I've chosen to modify or to change the fact that we have a studio and I want to replace it with the one room, okay? Afterwards, as you can remember, we had different entries for the parking data, okay? Sometimes we had a garage, sometimes we had um, a carport, open air garage and so on and so forth. And also here for simplicity reasons, I want to um, change all the entries, okay? and I want to have a yes or a no. Do we have a parking opportunity? Yes or no, okay? This is the modification step in this part. Afterwards, again, in order to make everything database readable, I want to convert all the numbers to integers, okay? Sometimes we see a number, and if you take a look at the data frame, uh, sorry, data type, um, you will see that it's actually a string and not an integer. And in this example, I would like to change everything to an integer, okay? Finally, we have to create a new column, okay? We want to know the price per square feet. And here we need to make a division, okay? We need to uh, divide the price by the square feet in order to have this column, okay? And this is actually the last part, or let's say the very last part will be the saving to the Excel file. And as always, I've prepared this initial template. Okay, you can download it in the download uh, section. And once this project is over, 
of course you will also have the possibility to download the uh, final template okay so this is actually it it should be again a step-by-step -step template or a step-by-step -step notebook so you know directly what is actually the next step we need to accomplish okay so this was a short overview of what we will do in the next videos and i would say i will pause it right now here and i see you in the next video stay tuned hi everybody welcome back to the second part of the data cleaning process so first of all we need to start and do our imports and then we want to concatenate all the 10 data sets so here we start with pandas okay so import pandas as pd is the first argument or the first import sorry and afterwards we need to import the o s module okay and os stands for operating system and i will show you in a few seconds why we have to import this module so for now let's just run this again Im oh sorry import os <coughs> not module just os okay so now it's fine and in the next step we have to merge all the 10 data sets so here, for example, I have copied and pasted everything inside one folder. Okay, um, I gave it a name, it's datasets. Here I have the 10 created datasets from the last section. And inside this folder, I have actually opened up the Jupyter Notebook. So again, let me show you how, how you can do it. So once you have imported your data sets in one folder you can go ahead and inside this um, navigation area you can just type in cmd and then go for the jupyter notebook okay run this now it takes a few seconds and afterwards you just can create your new notebook okay and then you have this notebook stored inside the folder where also all your 10 data sets are located okay that's it so for now i don't need it and i will delete this one okay that's it all right guys so this was a short uh, explanation and now what we have to do is first of all we need to get access to the current work directory and this is why we had to import the os module Okay, so here I will use it. It's os.getcwd. Sorry, cwd is the current work directory. Okay, current work directory. And we want to get access to this one. And I want to store it inside the path variable. And in the second step, we want to show all the files which are stored inside our current directory so in our current folder okay so show all files and now i want to provide the files variable and what i want to uh, be shown is the following so it's os dot list directory okay so list dir and here we need to provide the path which is this variable here okay so let me show you what we get so files and now you see here that inside our current work directory we have this um this files okay you see here for example i have 10 different data sets so once again it's this 10 and with this one okay so we have 10 and this here is actually the current notebook okay so you can actually make a cross check here you have the name so it's data underscore cleaning underscore initial blah 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 and here we have exactly the same okay so with this few lines we are able to print out the current files which are stored inside the actual or the current work directory and this is why we need to import the os module okay this is it and now in the next step 
um, what we need to do is we need to first of all provide one variable files needed and then we create a list sorry it should be an equal sign here we create a list and inside this list I want actually append all the 10 data sets okay because this is what we need in a few seconds so here let me just copy this one copy this paste it here and we also have to copy that one and you see here this uh, dollar symbol because the data set for Albuquerque is open right now it's this one let's see what happens if I close it and run this again okay now it's fine and you don't see this dollar sign anymore and let me just rewrite it so I will delete this one and copy this again okay so copy this paste it here and now we should have 10 different results okay so let's make a cross check length of the files needed and this is 10 and this should be fine because we have 10 data sets okay this is fine in the next step um, what we need to do we need actually to combine all our results so all our 10 data sets okay let's go ahead and do this in the first step we want to initialize the data frame okay this is our part one therefore let's provide one variable it's df underscore combine equals to pd dot data frame okay number one and then we can make or we can write a for loop because we want to loop through all this list here okay so for f which is our iteration variable for f in files needed df combined and sorry this should be combined not combine df combined equals to df combined dot append okay here we need to append everything and then we can make use of the pandas so it's pd dot read excel okay and we want to read f because f is the iteration variable okay it should loop through all this list okay so it's f and the second argument is actually sheet one okay why sheet one let me show you this is why i have actually opened up the albuquerque data frame or data set and here you see we want to have access to this sheet one okay this is it okay so now this should be fine let's run it okay and we have an error message let's take a look what we have okay so here we have for example element tree object has no attribute get iterator and sometimes you get error messages and you just don't know what to do so what my approach is i copy it copy this one go to google and paste it here and now let's see what we get so here for example you have the results of the stack overflow click on this one and here someone had the exact same problem and he is asking for help okay and here um, people try to answer his or her question and for example the solution in this example is this one first of all let's go ahead and install the open pi xl okay if you open up your cmd or your command prompt you can go ahead and do this so it's pip install open um sorry open pyxl so i've already installed it and this is why you see here this requirement already satisfied uh, message but if you didn't uh, install this uh, package please go ahead and do this and once you scroll down you see here that once this um, package is installed you are able to use this three lines okay copy this go back to your notebook and here you can actually um, paste it let's say between let's paste it directly after the imports 
paste it here and I want to have the import itself in this cell here, okay? I will run this cell again and now I want also to run this one. Okay, so this is fine and once I scroll down and run this cell again where previously we had received our error message, let's see what happens and voila, now we don't see an error message anymore, okay? This should be actually um, show you the real life uh, scenario. Once you get an error message and you don't know what to do, just copy the um, error message itself, go to Google, paste it there, and often people um, already asked for help regarding this question, and yeah. So once you take your time, you invest your time in searching for your solution, most of the times you will be successful and you will find what you were searching for. Okay, so in the next step, once we have combined all the data sets, let's see what we have. So let's go ahead and just type in DF combined, okay, which is this one. Let's see, and voila, now we have successfully combined all 10 data sets, okay, and we have 8,755 results or rows, okay, and this is actually what I wanted to show you. Okay, and don't get confused why this one here is the last uh, index. I mean, actually, this is why I told you we have to reset the index because this number just refers to Washington and not to the whole data frame, okay? This is it. And here again, we have 8,755 um, rows. So this is actually it for now. And in the next video, we want to take a look at the data cleaning process, okay? So guys, thank you very much and stay tuned. Hi everybody, welcome back to the third part of the data cleaning process. So first of all, what we want to do now is we want to check the data frame for the missing data, okay? So in the last video, we have actually created this data frame. It consists of our 10 different data sets, okay? And the name of this data frame is df underscore combined. Okay, now let's go ahead and check the data frame for missing data. Okay, it's here. So let's go ahead and do this. So it's df combined. Okay, and in this brackets, you need again to write df combined dot is na. Okay, then any and the axis is one. So here we can check for the missing data, let's take a look. And before I run this one, actually what is a better idea? Let's run the um, info method. So df combined dot info. And here we have information about the data itself, okay? So this is the amount of our entries. So 8,755, okay, it's this one. The amount or the number of rows. And actually we have eight columns. Okay, this makes sense, it's this one. And here, you see here we have seven different uh, data points. Uh, sorry, eight, we start from index number zero. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Makes sense. And you see here, for example, that the address column has 8,755 non-null rows, okay? So this number is actually exactly the same what we see here. What does this mean? This means in this address column, we don't have one missing value, okay? So the data is complete. If we have 8,755 um, results, we have also 8,755 address information, okay? So there is no missing data. Same applies for the last one, it's the location. I mean, this makes sense because location was created by us, okay? As you can remember, in the last section, 
after we have extracted our data, we have created uh, manually the location column. And this actually makes sense that we don't have any missing data here. But you see here for all the remaining data points, these numbers um, are actually always smaller than the amount of the total entries, okay? That means for bedrooms, bathrooms, area, year built, parking and price, we always have at least one missing data point, okay? And this is how you should read this information here, okay? Now, this is actually what I wanted to run, this line, okay? And here we want to check for at least one missing value in a row. So let me provide a comment here so that you know what we are actually um, checking here. So check for at least one missing value in row. Okay, that's it. Now let's run it. And you see here that we have all in all 929 rows where at least one data is missing. Okay, so for example here, let's start with the first one. It's Albuquerque. And you see, we don't have information about the bedrooms, bathrooms, area, year built, and the parking in the result 370 of Albuquerque. Okay, so another example, let's say uh, we choose, let's say the last one, okay. It's the index 856 for Washington. And here we have no information about the bathrooms, okay. And this is why this um, statement is actually quite, um, yeah, quite useful because again, it checks for at least one missing value in row. And in this example, we have um, exactly one missing um, data point. And here we have, for example, one, two, three, four, five missing data, okay? This should give us an overview um, what the uh, missing data actually is. So, as something something additional, what you can do is you can check the, sorry, check the missing uh, values in a heat map, okay? But it's just a short addition, okay? Here you have to actually to use the Seaborn uh, library. That means here inside the import cell, we can imp import the Seaborn library. And if you haven't installed it in your computer, go to your uh, command prompt or to the CMD. So it's CMD command prompt and just type in pip install Seaborn, okay? For me, I've already installed this package. It doesn't make sense to run it again, but if you don't have it on your computer, please go ahead and install it. Okay, so this is fine. Now let's take a look at the heat map, which shows the missing values. Let's see how to get access to this. So actually what you also can do is, so the convention or the abbreviation for Seaborn is SNS. Okay, the same um, what we have here for pandas, it's PD and for Seaborn we have SNS. Okay, it's just a convention. You don't need to use it, but it's um, actually rec recommended because um, yeah, it's a convention, right? So run it again. Now go down. And now let's um, print out the heat map. So it's SNS dot heat map. Okay, and here you need to provide the data frame. DF underscore combined dot is NA. Okay, then we have the Y tick labels. These are actually arguments you need to provide. This is false. Then C bar is also false. And the C map, sorry. The C map is actually the color map. So C map is in this example, uh, B U P U, okay? Now, if I run it, you see here the heat map of the missing values looks like this, okay? And for example, here you see we have missing data for bath, um, bathrooms, area, year built, parking, and we don't have 
at least um, one single missing data for address and the location. And also the price is actually complete. So let's take a look here. Okay, so now in this heat map we don't see it, but if we take a look at the info uh, function, um, we see that three price points are actually empty, okay? Because here, 8.755, 8.752, but in this heat map, we can't see it actually, okay? So, and here, for example, if you want to change the color, is it's actually quite simple. Here I have the documentation. Um, about the color maps or the examples of the color maps and we have used right now the Bupu, it's this one and let's say you want to change it and you want to use the what do we want to use let's say you want to have this one let's say it's YIGN okay let's take a look can I copy it no it doesn't work YIGN let's change it G N. Let's run it again. Okay, it did not work. I don't know why, but actually I don't want to um, invest time in this one because it's not part of the um, of our goal. Um, let's just use another one. So B U G N. Okay, as another example, B U G N. Run this one, and here you see that now we have actually a different color. And this is actually the point I wanted to show you. Okay, that's it. Okay, so now we know we have 929 rows where at least um, one data is missing in a row. Okay, and in the next step, once you see that your data frame is not, let's say, not perfect or you have missing data, it's up to you as a data scientist to or data analyst, you need to decide on your own how you want to handle this situation. So for now, for simplicity reasons, I want to drop or to remove every single line where at least one data point is missing. Okay, and let's see how to how to do this. So here I want to provide a few more cells and now Let's write down df combined equals to df combined dot drop. Sorry, df combined. So give me one second. Okay. Dot drop. Okay. We want to drop this one. Drop NA. That means we want to drop all entries where at least one data is missing. Okay. And overwrite the alt. Um, the old data frame with the new and updated data frame. This is why we have to write this df combined twice, okay, here and here. If, for example, I would write it like this, it won't be all written and I won't actually um, overwrite it. And this is why I need to provide this data frame name again. This is the reason. Now I want to run it. Okay, no error message, this is fine. And now let's take a look at the DF combined info again. Let's see what we have now. Okay, and let's take a look. 7,826 results. Okay, let's take a look at our previous info. And here we had 8,755. Okay, this makes sense because now we have actually dropped or removed or deleted more than 900 rows okay this is why this um, this number is actually lower than the previous one and now this also makes sense for example here you see that we don't have right now one single row where uh, data is actually missing okay here again we have 7826 entries and for example, here in the area, we have also 7,826 non-null um, yeah, non rows. And this actually applies for all the eight data points. Okay, that means right now we were able to get, get rid of all 
the missing data. Okay, so this was actually the demonstration. And now maybe you will ask what happens if we run this heat map again. Let me just copy this one, paste it here. Let's run this now again. And you see it's empty. Okay, we don't have a single missing value for now. And this should be actually the demonstration how we can get rid of the missing values. Okay, this was it. In the next step, let's go ahead and check for duplicate entries and also for the outliers. And to be honest, actually, I think it's a bad idea to start with the reset and with the index change and then proceed with the outliers and the doubles. That means let me just put this cell above, okay, and this one down below. Okay, we just here changed the um, the the priorities. Everything else remains actually the same. Okay, let's also do this in our description here. So let me just cut this off and paste it right now here. All right. Okay, this looks fine. Now let's go down again and take a look at the index itself. And before we proceed, now let's take a look again how the existing data frame looks like. So DF combined, and you see here, um, we have more than 7000 results, but actually the index itself doesn't look correct, okay? So for example, this one 854 doesn't refer as an index to the whole data frame, but this is the index for Washington, okay? Here number four is the index for Albuquerque, but we want to have a unique index, okay? Not a separate index for each and every state, okay? And this is what we want to achieve with the with the following line, okay? So, df combined dot reset index, you, we need to use this function, and drop is true, okay? This is the argument, drop is true. Now we want also to re overwrite the old one. This is why we need to um, actually um, store it inside the existing data frame, okay? This is the logic. Now let's run this one. And now if we take a look at the updated data frame, it looks like this. Okay, and you see here, this is right now different. Here we start with index zero and we go to index 7825. Okay, and this looks different than this one. Now we have a unique index for this whole data frame and this is what we have achieved by using the reset index function with the drop equals true argument. Okay, this is it. So this was the step for the index reset. And now let's go ahead and check the outliers and the doubles. Okay, so I would say let's start with the doubles and then proceed with the outliers. So if you decide to observe the duplicate or duplicate um, entries, what you can do is you can use the duplicated function. Let me show you how to do this. So first again, we start with the name of the data frame, dot, then duplicated, dot sum, okay? And this actually shows us the duplicate entries. So. Let me provide one comment here. Check for duplicates. Duplicates, okay? This is it, let's take a look. Okay, so now we have an error message duplicated. Okay, sorry for this, this is a function. Now let's run this again. Okay, this looks right now fine. So all in all, we have 1,580 duplicate entries. Okay, now let's take a look um, what row, for example, is presented um, twice. Again, let's start with the DF combined data frame. Then we have to use the LOC or the log function. 
okay again df underscore combined dot duplicated comma and then a colon okay and now let's run the cell and we see here this one 580 is this one here okay so according to this information all these rows are actually presented twice in the data frame so actually we can make a cross check so for example let's say we want to check for albuquerque okay how can we do this so actually you have different approaches what i want to do is the following i want to open up the folder where my data um, data sets are stored then i open the albuquerque data set okay go back to our notebook and for example here i want to copy this name of the street or the address right copy this one and now let's paste it here so it's Control f then Control v to paste it and now let's find all and you see here it's it's true we have two different also actually two um, entries with this street here okay now let's just highlight this one let's say it's with yellow and the next one is also with yellow it's this here okay and now if we observe everything carefully we see that the street is identical beds baths square feet is also identical year okay so you see here every single entry here is exactly the same what we see here okay and with this method for example you can make a short cross check okay you don't actually need to do it for for everything it's you will go crazy but um this was just a short demonstration how to double check if it's really the fact that we have um this stuff here uh, duplicated so what I want to do now in the next step is the following. So for simplicity reasons, I just want to cut off all duplicate entries. Okay, that means now we want to remove 1580 rows. I know it's a lot, but our data frame itself is actually quite big. So we have more than 7000 results and we will actually um, <laughs> We won't go dead if we remove um, 1580 rows, okay? This is actually it. So what I want to do in the next step is the following here. I want to make use of the drop underscore duplicates function. So let me show you. First, we start with our data frame, df combined dot, sorry, dot drop duplicates. It's this one okay now let's run it and now you see how our data frame looks like after we have actually dropped all the duplicate results okay but now it's not overwritten it's just let's say it's something like a preview okay so let me show you if i run df combined again we have more than 7000 results and actually after cleaning or after dropping the um, duplicate results we just have more than 6000 that means we need to overwrite this data frame it's df combined equals and then we have the statement here okay and i will get rid of this cell and rerun this one again and then let's call the df combined data frame and now we have what we want to um, to get okay this is right now the current amount of rows and again you see here now since we have changed the uh, data frame we have modified it we also need to take care of the modification of the index itself okay you see here we still have the old index but it doesn't match with the current rows that means let's scroll up and let's search for uh, for the index part it was this one okay so copy that now do 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 let's scroll all the way down again paste it here okay let's run it 
okay and now let's call this data frame again okay so now you see here the index in this case was also updated this now makes more sense this is actually it so this was actually the process of the removing of the duplicate entries and initially i wanted to proceed and take a look at the outliers but to be honest now it makes more sense to do it in a further step so a little bit later because initially or first of all we have to convert all the string elements to integers okay for example here this one is a string element and it's not an integer and it doesn't make that much that much sense to proceed right now in the current step with the outlier observation and i would say first of all let's modify all the string elements okay and once all this um, data is standardized then we can proceed with the outlier observation okay so we will just put it in um, in a different step here okay so data cleaning process and the outliers i will actually um, put in um, a further step let's say do, do, do. before we save it to excel we take a look at the outliers okay so this is again one shot modification so check doubles this is actually what we have done and we want to check for outliers before we save it to the excel file check for outliers this is right now the updated agenda okay this is it all right guys so thanks a lot and i see you in the next video where we want to take a look at the price columns okay we want to change the price column name and we want to uh, cut off this string elements like the dollar sign and the comma okay so this will be part of the next video thank you very much stay tuned and i see you in the next one Hi everybody and welcome to part number four of the data cleaning part. So in the last video we have taken a look how to handle missing data, how to reset and to change the index of the data frame and how to handle duplicate entries. Okay, now we want to focus on the price column. So let me just scroll down and show, show you the current state. So this is right now our updated data frame and you see here we have 6246 rows again in the very beginning we had more than 8000 rows then we wanted to get rid of um, duplicate entries and also we wanted to remove missing data okay so at least um, if one row has at least one missing data we decided to cut off this whole row okay and now it makes also sense why instead of 8000 plus rows we just have right now um more yep 6246 rows okay so this is it and in the next step what we want to do is we want to focus on the price column okay because as you can remember we want to make everything database readable and now this is actually stored as a string and we need actually to start a process and find ways how to make or how to convert this one from a string to an integer okay and the first step here is to remove this dollar sign and to remove this comma and instead of price the name of the column should be price either um, price in dollar or we want to make price and a dollar sign inside um, the brackets okay let's take a look how this can actually look like so first let's start with the renaming process so we want to rename price column and update existing data frame okay this is right now the requirement and every time you want to rename a column 
you need first of all start with your data frame here we have df combined dot rename okay make use of the rename function then you need to specify what columns you want to rename in our example it is the price column okay here we have to work with a dictionary so price is the key then we have a column and finally we have the value and this should be actually the new name okay so either we will write it like this price in dollar or let's make it a little bit uh, shorter just like this okay i think this looks better okay so this is actually the renaming part and we also want to uh, replace the old one with the new one that means df combined equals okay because we want to store this um, this stuff here inside our existing data frame or oh, this is just the overwriting process okay this is it and finally let's also call df combined and let's see how this looks so you see here now we were actually able to rename the price column so again here we had just price and now after this renaming part we have price and inside the uh, brackets we have the dollar sign okay this was actually part number one and now in the next step we need to go ahead and cut off this string element here okay this is why we have actually provided this dollar information here inside the column name that means we don't have actually um, a lot of value out of this symbol here okay and nevertheless we need to remove it in order to be able to make this one as an integer or to convert this price to an integer to make everything database readable okay and now let's proceed and cut off this dollar symbol here so again we start with the df combined data frame then we have our column name it's this one okay and here we need to use the str function str dot strip so give me one second this autocomplete stuff of a pandas is sometimes a little bit crazy so str for string dot strip and here we need to provide what we want to get rid of okay and as it's actually this dollar symbol here this is it and now we need to overwrite the um the entries here okay that means what i want to do now is i need to target again df combined and the name of the column okay and it's actually it looks like this so the, the procedure is actually the same as in the previous parts where we have just used df combined to be able to overwrite the old data frame with the new information and here we don't want to overwrite the whole data frame just the um, price in dollar column okay or the entries inside this column this should be actually um, be overwritten this is the whole logic behind it and now let's run this cell okay and let's call the updated data frame let's take a look okay and now this looks actually fine here in the last step we have changed the column name and now in the current step we have actually cut off this dollar symbol here okay this is fine and finally for the price column we also have to remove this comma okay we don't need it and actually this is right now quite simple what i want to do is i want to copy this line copy this paste it here okay and now we just need to replace the um the dollar so let me just take a look actually sorry for that now in this step i want to show you something different i don't want just to get rid of this one i want to use the replace function okay sometimes you can use the strip function 
and you will see a lot of different opportunities in your data cleaning process where it makes more sense to use the replace function and in this example you can use both but I want to go ahead and show you how to work with the uh, replace function here okay so instead of str.strip we use str.replace okay and in the first argument you need to provide what you want to be replaced and it's actually this comma okay it's this one and in the second argument you choose what um, should be there instead okay and we want to have an empty string that means just nothing okay so again you can either use the strip function to get directly rid of this comma or you can use the replace function to say okay instead of the comma I want just have nothing okay empty space empty string whatever you want to call it now let's run the cell okay no error message this is actually fine and now let's see how the data frame looks like right now okay so now this looks fine so you see here we don't have this comma anymore and now this actually can look like an integer but it's still a string element but before we start actually converting everything to um, to an integer we need to do the same modifications here for a few different columns so in the next video what we want to do is we want to proceed with the area column okay you see here we have the diff uh, the same um, let's, let's say the same uh, situation we want to put after area in brackets the square feet okay so it's actually almost exactly the same what we have done here we have cut off this dollar sign from here and put this information inside the column name the same will be applied to area and square feet and in the second step we also need to cut off this string element then this square feet string element and also the comma okay so the process will be actually similar to this price column here okay so this is actually everything for this video or for this part and actually thank you very much and i see you in the next video where we are going to cover the area column okay stay tuned and i see you in a few moments hi guys and welcome back to part number five of the data cleaning process now we want to modify the area column okay and also the entries inside this column here so the logic is actually let's say exact the same what we have done when we have modified the price column and now we need to apply the same steps for the area okay let's go ahead and do this in order to save some time we can just copy a few lines here so here when we changed the price column we have used this statement or this lines so let me just copy this go back down and here inside the change area column cell I can just uh, go ahead and paste it here and modify um, the appropriate uh, stuff here so in this example what we need to do is we want to change area to oh sorry for that let's change area to area in square feet okay so we can either name it like this sorry in and not ind area in uh, square feet or we can also make it like this so square feet in brackets and this also can be our new column name and I think this is what I like more and make sure you have the um, the quotes set up properly otherwise you get an error message and it actually should look like this okay this should be our new name of the area column okay let's take a look let's run the cell and now this looks like this okay it was right now quite fast because we were able to copy and paste the lines which we have applied for the price column here okay this was step number one then in the second step we want to cut off this square feet 
but not just the square feet, but also this tiny empty uh, space here, okay? So don't, don't get confused. We also need to get rid of this one, okay? That means we have five string characters to remove, okay? So this empty space here, so one, and then S, Q, F, T, okay? Five different string elements. Let's go ahead and do this. And again, we can just scroll up and copy what we had here inside the price modification. So copy this one, go back down, paste it here. Okay. And after we've modified it, we want to print this data frame out. Okay. This is it. And now what we want to do is the following we need to modify this one so it's area square feet here we also have area and square feet okay and we want to get rid of not the dollar sign anymore but the square feet including this empty space here okay copy this one and paste it here and it should look like this again we have five string characters and not four okay this is it let's go ahead and run the cell let's output the data frame let's see and now this looks actually fine okay so here we don't have this square feet string element anymore but just um, the number itself which is at this moment uh, still a string but we will take care of it in a later step Okay, now let's go ahead and do the same what we've done for the price. Let's remove this comma here. Okay, let's do it. And here I've scrolled up. Let's make life a little bit easier. Copy this cell here. Go back down. Paste it here. Okay, and now again we have to modify this stuff here. So it's area and square feet. This one too, area and square feet, and this can be actually the same, right? We want to use, in this example, the replace function and replace the comma with an empty string. Okay, let's run it. Let's see what we have. And voila, this looks fine. So you see here, we have in a few minutes changed the name of the column, okay? we have actually cut off this um, square feet inside the rows and we actually removed the commas okay this is it so this is actually everything for this video and in the next video we need to take a look at the bedrooms and the bathrooms and here we also have to do a few modifications okay this is it so thank you very much Stay tuned and I see you in the next video. Hi everybody and welcome to part six of the data cleaning process. Now, in the next step, what we want to do is we need to take care of the bedrooms results, okay? And we start actually with cutting off this string element. This is our first requirement, okay? And the second requirement is to think how to handle, for example, this result here, because now we don't have a number. We have just the information that um, this housing, which is located in this address, um, we don't have information about the amount of bedrooms. The only thing is what we know that this is a studio. Okay. And we will actually think about it once we have cut off this bats element okay this bats string element let's go ahead and do this actually again the logic is the same what we have done previously so we can again save some time let's go to the area data and here we have actually cut off this um, sqft string element including this empty space let's copy this one go back down paste it here and now instead of area and square feet, we have the bedrooms, okay? Here we also need to replace it 
its bedrooms. And now what do we want to strip? Here in bedrooms, it's actually beds, including, and again, we have again a white space or an empty space, okay? Let's just copy this five string ele elements. Copy this, go back down, and now here, instead of empty space SQFT, we have empty space um, capital B E D S. Okay, again, we have five um, string characters and we want this to be stripped. Okay, now let's run the cell and take a look how the updated data frame looks like. Okay, and now it's, it looks like this. You see here, we don't have the bats information anymore. We just have a simple number. Okay, and this is right now what we want to have. In the next step, um, we need to somehow get rid of this studio. But before we proceed, let's take a look what different values we have inside the bedroom column. Okay, let me show you how we can um, achieve it. So DF combined, then we have the bedrooms. Okay, and here we want to count the values. So it's value underscore counts. Okay, and let's see what happens if we run this cell right now. You see here that on the left side it shows us, for example, we have three bedrooms, okay, and 2122 rows have three bedrooms, okay. In this example, we have 214 rows with six bedrooms, and so on and so forth. Here in studio, we have actually 80 results which have inside the bedrooms column the information that it's a studio okay and again we need to make it database readable and for this example or in this uh, tutorial in this video course i want to have inside the bedrooms just numbers okay that means somehow we need to get rid of this studio um, element or this studio um, entry and again you have different um, possibilities, different approaches, but for simplicity reasons, I want to set studio to one bedroom, okay? So whenever we have one studio inside the row, this should be replaced by one bedroom, okay? This is right now the logic um, for this project here, okay? So let's go ahead and do this. Again, we want to replace studio with one bedroom. And Actually, what I want to do now is I want to make use of the um, Lambda function, okay? Let's go ahead and first of all target our data frame. It's DF combined. Then we need to target the bedrooms, okay? This is our column. Then apply Lambda, okay? Lambda X. And now we have actually a condition, okay? Whenever we have a studio, we want to have a one, okay, for one bedroom. That means one if studio, okay, this is right now the convention, in x, else x, okay, this is right now what we want to achieve. What does this mean? This means whenever we have studio inside a column, okay, whenever, for example, we have this one, we want to replace it with a one, okay? And for all the remaining um, rows where studio is not present, we just want to keep it as it is, okay? So for example, if we have three bedrooms, it's actually not a studio, okay? Here, nothing will happen and this three will remaining uh, the same, okay? The only difference is that whenever we see a studio, this should be actually um, converted to a one. This is actually the um, the logic behind this statement and behind this lambda function. Okay, this is it. And actually, we need to overwrite the current bedrooms entries. That means here I need to target the bedrooms column. Okay, 
it's like this. So df combined bedrooms equals to df combined bedrooms apply lambda x one if we have a studio. If there is no studio, um, just please remain um, as it is. Okay, don't change anything. And this is right now this whole logic. So I will run the cell again. Oh, sorry, not again. I will run the cell. Okay. And now let's take a look how the data frame looks like. Let's go ahead. Okay. And as you can remember, in our last entry, we had studio. And if I scroll up, it's this one. Okay. So uh, 2125 14th Street. It's this one. Okay. Here we had studio. Now we have number one. And this should be just an example um, what the logic is behind this lambda usage here. Okay. And this is it. What we also can do now is we can check if a certain string element is inside the data frame. So let me show you what I actually mean. So let's say, for example, I want to check, let's say if Washington is inside our data frame. So then I just can go ahead and type in if, sorry, if Washington in df combined dot values, okay, then I want to print out element is in the data frame, data frame, okay. So again, remember here, once we have created the the data frame we have used the dictionary okay and the column was always the key and the results this was actually the um the value okay so every time you work with dictionaries you have again key and value pairs okay and the key in this example was the column name and the values were represented by the entries here okay and let's check it out if for example, Washington is inside this whole data frame. Let's take a look. And now it's printed out. Okay, element is in the data frame. Let's go ahead and let's um, purposely use a typo. Okay, let's say I want to include an X. Okay, and now you see that nothing is printed out. Let's go ahead for a different example. Let's say I want to check if Las Vegas is in this data frame and it is okay it makes sense now let's go for a typo run it again and we don't get anything back and the same we can actually apply to the studio to check if studio is inside the data frame after we have replaced studio with number one let's take a look run it and voila we don't get anything back that means studio is right now not part of the data frame anymore. Okay, this was just a short cross check. Cool. Next one. What we want to do is we need to cut off the baths string element exactly actually the same what we have done in the bedrooms part. Okay, that means let's make life again um, simple and scroll up. Copy this line here go down again, paste it here. And now let's replace the appropriate um, appropriate data. So now we have the bathrooms column. Here it's the bathrooms column two. And in this part, instead of beds, we have baths. Okay, so the logic is again the same. We start with one empty, um, empty space, then we have B A T H S and here for example we have a singular but if we cut off all this six uh, string elements that means empty space then we have number two number three number four five and six um, it includes actually the cut of the singular bath okay that means here if we have a string element which contains this letters here everything should be cut off okay and this actually this singular is part of this plural stuff okay so that means automatically this will be cut off too cool now let me just paste it here 
Okay, this should look fine right now. Let's run the cell and let's print out the combined data frame. Okay, so now this looks actually fine. We have successfully um, removed the baths, uh, sorry, beds and baths string elements and now here we have just numbers. Okay, this is what we wanted to have. And in the next step, what we want to do is we want to take care of the parking data, which is actually this, this column here. Okay, so thank you very much. I see you in the next video. Hi everybody, welcome to part number seven of the data cleaning process. Now we want to modify the parking column here, okay? And our goal is to distinguish either we have a parking opportunity or there is no parking opportunity. That means all the values inside this parking column should be a yes or a no. And now we need to find the logic how to achieve this goal. First of all, let's make use again of the value counts function that means here i start with df combined then we have the parking and afterwards it's value underscore counts okay let's sorry not abs just value counts and you see here that inside the parking column we have this information okay so for example garage is represented 1600 23 times inside this parking column whereas for example the none information is represented 142 times like this one for example okay and now what i want to do actually again you have different opportunities different approaches but for simplicity reasons i want to search for keywords which indicate that there is actually a parking opportunity available okay so for example if we have garage it's actually almost 100% that there is a parking opportunity right if we have something like let's see what else we have something like a carport for example like this one if we have something like carport that that also means that a parking opportunity is there okay if we have something like cars or car, this is also a sign that something um, is there, okay? Or for example, open spaces, here we can just um, either target open or spaces. And in this example, I will also, I want also to um, target this open keyword, okay? That means we search for keywords which can um, implicate that parking opportunities are available and all the entries of the columns which contain these keywords will have a yes inside the column okay everything else will have a no so i hope this is not too confusing um just be with me and it will make sense in a few moments okay so here what i want to do now is the following I can again work or use the lambda function. That means I start targeting the parking column. Then we have the apply lambda x, okay? And now this is actually the new entry inside the column. We want to have a yes if certain conditions are actually fulfilled. If we have, for example, the string element garage in x or if we have what was the second keyword carport right or if we have a carport in x or if we have car sorry car in x and the last example was the fact that if we have open in the string element okay so in x or open in x then we want to have this yes as our column entry or as our result okay and what happens 
if none of these four keywords, one, two, three, four, are inside the columns, then we want to get back a no, okay? That means else no. And you see here, it's a simple if statement, okay? And again, we have four different uh, keywords. This is actually for simplicity reasons. We could actually invest more time in this whole investigation stuff, but I want to show you with a simple example how we can change the column entries based on this information, based on these four keywords by using the um, Lambda function, which comes along with Python, okay? If we have one of these four keywords inside the parking column, then we want to have a yes, okay? If it's not finding none of these four keywords, we will get back a no, okay? This is right now the logic of this line here, of these two lines, okay? And now we need also to, or we have also to um, overwrite the existing parking column. So it's parking and it, this one should be fine for the moment, okay? This is fine, let me make a cross check. Apply lambda x, yes, if garage in x or carport in x or car in x or open in x, else no. Okay, so this looks fine. Let's run it. We don't have an error message. This is actually fine. And now, here we have used the value counts and we had um, returned back or it was returned back all these entries here, okay, which are unique. So now, if I go ahead and copy this line and run it again after we have made use of the lambda function let's see what we get back and voila now we have just either yes or no again what have we done we have checked if one of these four keywords we have chosen randomly is represented inside the parking column if it is then we have a yes if none of these keywords are represented inside this parking column, we want to get back a no. Okay, and this is it. Now, let's take a look how the updated data frame looks like. Okay, and voila, now inside this parking column, we just have a yes or a no. Okay, and I can tell you if this is 100% correct, Okay, because here we have just focused on four different keywords. It can actually be a lot more, but for this tutorial, this should be enough. It's a tool which I want to give you for your future project. And it's actually up to you how you use it. Okay, for simplicity reasons, I will leave it like this. And here we have actually the information that inside this whole data frame, um, we have 4,780 parking opportunities, okay? And 1,466 um, missing parking opportunities. All parking opportunities are not available, okay? This is actually what I wanted to show you with this example, okay? This is it for the moment. And in the next step, what we have to do is we want to convert all numbers to integers, okay? We want to check if it's already an integer or is it uh, still a string element which, which just um, looks at the first look like an integer and we want to actually convert all the numbers to integers, like for example, this number, this one, this one, this one, and the price um, information. Okay, this is actually the requirement for the next video. So that's it. If it was too confusing, please let me know in the Q&A section. And again, thank you very much for your time and I see you in the next video. Hello everybody and welcome to part eight of the data cleaning process. Now we want to convert all numbers to integers, okay? And actually this part of this uh, section, I want to split up in two different parts. First, we start with the bedrooms, bathrooms and area and square feet. 
this is actually quite straightforward. But the tricky part is the year build and the price in dollar. Okay, And since both of them are a little bit tricky, I will create a separate video for both of them. Okay, This is it. Now before we start, what we need to do, we need to import uh, two modules. Okay, So it's, it's actually from Pandas itself. We need to import so from pandas.api dot types we have to import the is underscore string d type this is the first one okay the next one is so let me just copy it paste it here and now we need to import the numeric type okay or numeric data type so with this functions what we can do is we can check if an entry is actually saved as a string or as a number okay and this is actually why we have to import these two functions here okay this is it now let's go down again Doo -doo -doo. okay again we start now with the bedrooms first let's check if the bedrooms entries are uh, casted as a string or as a number. Let's take a look. So I want to provide one comment. Check if bedrooms um, is a string or bedrooms column. Okay, makes more sense. If bedrooms column is a string element. Okay, let's take a look. Here we need to call this function is underscore numeric underscore d type okay d type is data type and this first two functions we have imported a few seconds ago okay now let's check if this is actually or actually here i've provided string element let's check for the numeric okay if this is a number or a string so is numeric data type and now we need to provide actually the column and it's inside the data frame and the column is bedrooms okay let's take a look and this is actually a boolean that means we get back a true or a false let's go ahead and you see here this is right now false okay i want to add up a cell or add a cell here copy this one paste it here and instead of numeric let's provide string Okay, string d type. This was the second function we have imported. Let's run this one. And voila, you see here, now this is true. Okay, that means this numbers here actually can look like, um, let's say, like a number, like a data type number, integer, but it's actually a string. Okay, and this is actually how we can check it out. And now it's up to us to change the data type okay let's see how we can do this actually we can use the s type function let me just show you so here we have df combined this is our data frame then we have the bedrooms and now we want to uh, change the data type and this data type should be the um, integer okay now let's use the s type function and we want to store it um, as an integer okay this is it and before i run it i actually want to rewrite the current column that means i will just copy the statement paste it here at um, at um, equal sign here and now i can run this cell again okay we don't have an error message right now and actually not much will change right now for our um, visual eye okay but if we check right now again if this is um, a numeric data type okay here a few moments ago we had false now we have run this cell and we wanted to cast it inside a, um, inside an integer okay or change the data type 
from string to integer. Let's see what happens if I run this cell again right now. And voila, now this is true. That means the check if this is actually a numeric data type showed us that this is true. What happens if we check if this is right now a string element and now this is false. This is what we want to achieve with this uh, few simple lines, okay? We want to change the data type and here we can change it and with these two cells we can actually check if this went um, fine or not. And the same we will apply right now for the bathrooms and again to make life simpler we can just copy and paste a few cells. Let's just copy the first one, paste it here. And now instead of bedrooms, we have bathrooms. Okay, here too, it's bathrooms. Next cell is this one, jup, jup. And here I've forgotten to mention that now we want to check for a string, okay? It's not number, because um, this is right now a string. Same will apply for this one. So string, okay, and finally, this line here should be that. So bathrooms, here we also have the bathrooms column, okay. Now, step number one is to check if this bathrooms entries are um, a numeric data type or a string data type, okay. Here we want to check for the numeric data type. Let's run it. This is false, okay? And here I want to provide bathrooms and not bedrooms, okay? Now, with this check, we have a result um, false. That means the bathrooms entries are not numeric. What about the check if we want to take a look if the entries are um, a string data type? Let's see what happens. Okay, true. Actually, you see, right now we have the same patterns like the previous example. And now, I just need to run this cell. That means, again, we want to change the data frame, sorry, the column bathrooms from the data frame to an integer. Okay, let's see. I run it. And now, if I run this cell again, that means I check again if this is numeric after changing um, the data type let's see and now it's true that means the check right now has um, shown us that now the bathrooms columns or at least uh, the entries inside the bathroom columns um, are stored inside or actually have the data type um, numeric okay this is right now the answer for this one and what about this Let's run it and you see here now the check if this is a string is actually false. Okay, this is what we want to have. This is what we wanted to achieve. Now also the bathrooms um, elements are a numeric data type. Okay, this is it. And finally, we have to do the same check for the area in square feet and actually the columns correct name looks like this okay area square feet this is it now again to make life simple again let's just copy this few lines here number one this is number two and this is number three okay here check if say area is numeric element check if area is a string element and here we need actually to change also the the column name so area and square feet area and square feet and finally this two okay all right so again now we want to check where is it here we want to check this column okay is it a numeric data type or is it a string data type let's see First, we check for the numeric data type. It's false. What about the string data type? It's true. And now let's change it from string to integer. Okay, run this one. Make the check 
of the first cell again. Now it's true. And now if we want to check if it's a string data type, now it's false. Okay. So you've seen here the logic for bedrooms, bathrooms and the area and square feet was actually the same. Okay. First we have checked what data type we have. Okay. Is it numeric? Is it a string? Then we have changed it to an integer. And after changing the data type, we have run our Boolean check again. And voila, now we have the answer we have expected. Okay. Now, these three columns are numeric. Okay. We have right now integers. This is the first step. And in the next video, I have actually told you now comes the tricky part. We want to change the year build column and also the price column. Okay. So th thank you very much. Stay tuned and I see you in the next video. Hi everybody. Welcome to part nine of the data cleaning session. So now what we want to achieve is we need to take care of the year build. Okay. That means this column here, this one, we want to convert as an integer. Okay. This is right now the requirement and you will see this is actually a little bit more tricky than the previous ones. But let's make our hands dirty and let's start. So first of all, we want to check if numeric. So check if numeric. And let me just provide this comment here and make use of the is underscore numeric function. Here I want to provide the DF combined and the year build column. Okay. Now let's run it. Let's see. And this is false. Okay. That means the year build column is not uh, numeric at the moment. Okay. And we have to change it. So this was actually um, the, the initial step afterwards. Let's, let's see what happens if we try to change uh, from or actually change to numeric, okay, or to an integer. So let's see what will happen right now. So DF combined. So it's year build, okay, equals to DF combined year build because we want to overwrite the old one if this will work. Dot S type and then we have str okay uh, sorry not str my mistake it's int okay because we want to save it as an integer let's see what happens if we run it right now okay here you see we have an error message because we have somewhere the no info okay let's see what or actually how we can solve this issue so for now, I want to print out all results where the year build has the entries of no, no info. Okay. Let's see how we can achieve it. So let's go for DF combined. Okay. Now again, DF combined. And here I need to target the column. Okay. And the uh, value should be this one here. Okay. So highlight it, copy and paste it here. Okay. And now we see it here. So this is right now the convention to show us all the entries where year build equals no info. And you see it here. We have all in all 103 rows where year build is um, or year build contains the information that we don't know when this housing was built. Okay. So as you can remember in the previous videos, we have um, handled or we had to find a solution how to handle empty results. Okay. But for now, I mean, this is actually not very val valuable for us, but it's also not, um, let's say it, it, it's just not empty. Okay. We just have the information that we don't have an information, which is almost the same. Okay. But now it's up to us to decide, do we want to delete all the rows because we don't have the information about the um, year of the house building? Okay. 
or do we want to keep it? So as you can remember, when we had missing values, we have decided to remove all the rows where at least one uh, row contained a missing value. Okay, so this was actually our approach in the last sessions. But now I want to show you a different example. I mean, it's, it's up to you. If you want to, you can remove it. Okay, but actually I want to show you what we can do instead. Okay, because I mean, here we have a lot of uh, valuable information. I know, ins I mean, inside every row here, um, we have all data points except the year building information. Okay, and this is actually, we have 103 rows of this, um, of this situation. Okay, and what I want to do now is I want to replace every result where we have no info with a zero. Okay, and now we have to decide, okay, does, it, does this make sense? Does this not make sense? And my argument to do it is that, I mean, we can't actually work with the year build, okay? But we have all the remaining data, which is very, very important for our data analysis part, okay? And this is my argument why I don't want to remove this rows, okay? It's up to you. If you want to, please go ahead, remove it. But for now, for the uh, demonstration purpose, I will leave it like this and I want to replace all the no info um, with a simple zero. Okay, this is it. So let me go ahead and do this quickly. So here I want to uh, copy one line from my other screen, paste it here. And this is actually the same what we have done previously. We have the lambda function. Okay, and here what it's actually uh, saying us is the following. We want to have a zero, okay, if no info is in one of the uh, column entries, okay? Then we want to replace no info with zero. And if we don't have the no info in one of these columns, then we don't want to do nothing, okay? So leave it as it is, just for the rows or the um, entries where no info is present, we want to replace it with a simple zero. And this is the logic behind this statement here, okay? I mean, this is nothing nothing new. I just wanted to save some time um, because actually we have talked already about the lambda function and how to use it, okay? So this is right now, um, I mean, this was number, was it number four? So here we have one, two, number three and number four, okay? So maybe I can actually highlight it. So it's number three, show no info. And number four, we have replace, replace no info with a zero, okay? This is it. I will write it like this. Okay, so let's see what happens if we run this cell here. Okay, again, we have again an error message. Here we have the type error. Argument of type float is not iterable. Now let's see what is actually the case here. So before we proceed, let's go ahead and store every result inside a string okay because here for example it says us okay we have float elements and this is why we can't uh, make this line work okay so i will go ahead and try to save the results in a string save an str and here again i start with the df combined and the column name is year build dot S type here we can again make use of the S type str okay and we want to save it or overwrite the old one copy this one paste it here let's see okay now we don't have an error message this is fine and now in the next step let's take a look actually at the unique values okay so at the value counts 
actually I've already showed it to you in one of the previous sessions how this can look like. So let's say it's df combined, sorry, df combined year build. Sorry for that. Dot value underscore counts. Okay, and this should actually show us the unique values. So let me highlight it as number six. Okay, and you can see here that we have this dot zero, okay, or comma zero, however you want to read it. And before we proceed, actually we want to replace all the point uh, zero elements with just nothing, okay? We, we want to replace it, otherwise, um, yeah, it's hard for us to proceed because here you have seen that we have float elements and then in the next step we have stored them inside a string or converted them to, to a string but nevertheless we have this spellings here, okay? And we want to get rid of them. So let's go ahead and do this right now. And this is actually our number seven, okay? And actually I can also copy, or actually let's do it together right now, okay? So we have the DF combined year build, okay? dot apply and here again we need to use the lambda function lambda x okay and what we want to do is the following we want to replace all the elements which have dot zero with um, just nothing okay with an empty string that means we just want to cut this off okay this is right now the the approach or the goal or the idea behind this lambda function. Okay, let's go ahead and do this. So here we have dot zero and we want to replace it with an empty string. Okay, but we want to do it just if, sorry, nicht, uh, not id, but if um, we actually have this dot zero in one of the results. Okay, this is right now the condition, the if condition if dot zero in x, else x, okay? That means if we don't have dot zero in one of our results, that means leave it as it is. So for example, in this one, here nothing will happen because here we don't have this dot zero. Here we don't have this dot, um, dot zero, but here this one will change and this one will change, okay? This is the logic behind this lambda function here okay let's run it okay so now it looks like this and this is actually fine because um, now we we are able to get rid of the dot zeros but before we proceed we need to overwrite the old one that means as always copy this part paste it here don't forget the equal sign and run this cell again Okay, this was actually part number seven. Now let's take a look again at the unique values. Okay, let's rerun it. And voila, you see here that now we don't see um, this dot zero entries anymore. Okay, this was a short uh, cross check here with the value counts function. And now in the next step, what we have to do actually is the following. As you can remember, we tried to, to run this cell here, okay? But this in the beginning did not work, okay? Here we wanted to replace all entries where we have no info with a simple zero. This did not work, but now I want to run this again. And now it does work, okay? Here, let me just provide, this was then number eight. So in the step number four, we have tried it. It didn't work, then we had step five, six, seven. Okay, five, six, and seven. And now again in the step number eight, this is actually working. Okay. And as you can remember here, we also tried to uh, store the results as an integer or save them as an integer. Okay. 
And this also did not work in the beginning. Now let's run the cell again and let's see if this works right now. Now it does work and it was actually step number number nine okay so it was step number nine okay so and now what we have to do is the following we just need to make a short cross check if the column right now is numeric or not okay after we've changed it to an integer we can actually go ahead and rerun this cell here and let's see what happens if we check if this column is numeric and voila now we have what we wanted to achieve okay and maybe we can um, make it as number 10 and this was actually the the cross check or the rerun of this cell here I know it was a little bit confusing but this were actually the steps um, which we had to do in order to make this year build column um, as an integer okay and now next what we have to do so first let's uh, just see what it's actually look like right now df combined okay let's run it and now you see here that um, this are right now um, integers okay this is right now very very important to know and the last column here is the price, okay? And let's go ahead and change the data type of the price column. Hi everybody and welcome to part 10 of the data cleaning process. Now it's time for us to change the data type of the price column, okay? Of this one, because we want to change it and um, save it as an integer. So, as always, first of all, let's check if this is actually already numeric or not. Let's go ahead and do this. Here we can again use the isNumericDtype function. Okay. And then let's provide the price column here. So it's df combined price. And let's run the cell. And it's now false. Okay. That means this column here is not yet numeric. Next step. Let's see what happens if we simply try to um, change it to an integer okay, or to a numeric data type. Let's go ahead and do this. So df combined. And here we have the price in dollar. Okay. Here again, let's go ahead and use the s type function and we want to store it in an integer okay and also we have to overwrite the old one so the old column paste it here don't forget the equal sign okay and this is actually again the convention to be able to overwrite the old one with the updated one here we try to um, save it as an integer let's see what happens here now you see we have an error message. Why? Because we have some entries where um, the number contains a plus sign. Okay. And again, it's up to you how you want to handle this data. But for simplicity reasons, I want just to cut this off or to remove this plus sign. Okay. And in the next step, uh, try to save it again as an integer once we get rid of this plus sign here so again let's use the lambda function i mean it's it just makes more sense in our example that means it's df combined price in dollar okay and here let's go for the apply then we have lambda x and now we need to write our condition. We want to replace the plus symbol if it's actually present. Okay, we want to replace it with an empty string. That means just replace a plus with nothing. Okay, this is it. This is the logic behind this statement here or this part. And actually we should write our condition. So with the if statement, 
if plus in x, okay, else x. That means if we have somewhere a number with a plus sign, go ahead and replace the plus with nothing, with an empty string, okay, and for all the numbers where we don't have the plus sign, just do nothing, okay. This is right now the the instruction which we provide with this cell here. And again, we want to overwrite the old one with the new one. So copy this, paste it here, and don't forget the equal sign. This is it. So now let's go ahead, run this cell. Okay, looks fine, we don't have an error message. And in the next step, let me just go ahead and copy this line here and paste it directly underneath. Again, this is actually what we have tried to do previously. We want to um, change this column here. It should be an integer. Okay, now I run it and now we don't have an error message anymore. Okay, and in the last step, let's do what we have done in the first step. We want to check if it's a numeric data type after we have replaced the plus sign with an empty string and then we have saved it as an integer. We can try to run this line here and check if it's now numeric. And voila, it is, okay? And this is what we want to achieve. And now with all this previous step, steps we have actually accomplished the goal that all our numbers right now are definitely stored as integers okay so bedrooms bathrooms area and square feet year build and the price right all of them are right now integers this was actually the goal in the next video what i want to show you is I want to create a new column and then we want to want to divide the price by the square feet because we actually want to have the um, price for the square feet okay this is our individual new column and we want to create it in the following video so thank you very much stay tuned and i see you in the next one Hello everybody and welcome to part number 11 of the data cleaning process. This is actually the last video for this data cleaning part and what we want to do now is we want to create a new column and divide the price by the square feet. Okay, This is what we want to achieve and afterwards we also want to take a look at the outliers and how to handle them. Okay, Let's go ahead and do this. So whenever we want to create a new column, we can start like this. So DF combined, this is actually our data frame. Here we want to provide the column name. It's price per square feet, okay? And now we need to make a division. That means DF combined. Here we have the price, okay? And this should be divided by the square feet. So, our name is area square feet, okay, sorry, area square feet, and this is actually what we want to do now. So, let me go ahead and run this cell, okay, this looks fine. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the data frame. So, here you see that this new, um, this new column was actually created. Okay, this is fine, but what um, I personally don't like is the convention, what we have or what we see after the comma. Okay, and let's go ahead and just um, take a look how to round this one so we, that we see just two digits after each comma. Okay, let's see how we can accomplish it. And this is actually, yeah, actually quite simple. Let's target the new column. So it's price, sorry, df underscore combined, price per square feet. Here we need to round 
it by two. Okay, so we need to make use of the round function and here we need to provide how many digits we want to have after the comma. Let's run this cell. Okay, and this is what we want to have. Okay, here you see we have just two digits and we want to replace it actually, the old one, okay, with the new one. So paste it here. And now let's run this cell. Okay, no error message, this is fine. And now let's print out the data frame again. And this is what we want to have. Okay, so before the update, it looked like this. And now we have this updated format. Okay, so this is actually what we want to have. Okay, so this was it. And in the next step, let's go ahead and take a look if we have um, outliers in our data frame. Okay, now let's go on and take a look how we can handle outliers or how actually approach this whole outlier topic. So first of all, let me just add a row here. Okay, and I want to give it um, a short heading. Let's say check for outliers. Okay, then markdown and now this should be fine. All right, so for example here, actually you have different approaches, okay? I know people, they like to use a graph, okay, and take a look how the data is distributed. This is one way, but here I would like to show you how we can use the describe function, which comes with uh, pandas. So let's go ahead and use the data frame. It's df combined. And now inside this quotes, you can choose, uh, for example, one of these columns here, okay? So I mean, it makes more sense if you use a column where you have uh, numbers, okay? And in the last different, or in the last uh, videos, we have invested a lot of time to convert all numbers to integers, and now it will make our work a lot easier, okay? And also, um, it's very good for the database. And the database section comes actually in the next uh, part of this course. Okay, so for example here, um, let's just choose one random column. Let's go ahead and use the price per square feet. Okay, I will copy that, paste it here, and then let's go ahead and use the describe function. So it's describe. Okay, and now let's run it. And here you can make actually your analysis. Here we have, <coughs> sorry, here we have, for example, the amount of rows. Well, it's this one. Then we also have the mean, or the average, right? The standard deviation, then the minimum. Here we have the maximum. And here we have three different uh, percentiles, okay? But what's interesting for us in this example is, let's take a look at the minimum and at the maximum, okay? And here, for example, let's take a look and let's see how this entry is actually uh, looking like with the price per square feet of uh, 0 0.44 dollars. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at this one. And actually, let's let's print out all the entries where the price per square feet is below 10 dollars. Okay, let's take a look how we can achieve this one. In this example, we can use the log function, so LOC, okay, to locate. Then we need to provide again our data frame and the column we want to search for. It's this one, okay? So DF combined, then we have the locate function or the log function. And here inside these brackets here, we need to provide the column we want to search for, okay? And we just want to have the entries which are lower than ten dollars okay let's run this one and here you see we have one two three four and five results where the price per square feet is below ten dollars okay and in this example let's just go ahead and take a look on this one here we have this lowest value 0 0.44 okay which is this one and my approach is actually this so i will copy the street here copy this, go back to trulia.com and just paste it here, okay? And now let's take a look how this 
looks like. Okay, let's make a cross check. The price is one, um, sorry, one thousand eight hundred ninety-five. It's this one. Okay, in, in in it's in Indianapolis. Yep, this makes sense. And now, if you want to, you can make a cross a cross check. Take a look how this looks for to you. Do you want to keep it in your data frame or not? Okay, here we have this um, amount of square feet, which is more than four thousand, and with this price. And all in all, we have, um, as a result, this price per square feet. Okay, if we scroll down, um, it's also here, but here we just have number zero. <laughs> this is at least a little bit higher than a zero. And yep, so this is actually it. You see, this house is very, very old. Okay, yep, here. And it's actually up to you right now. Do you want to remove this house? Okay, from your entry, do you want to uh, keep it? It's up to you. Okay, so here we actually checked the the result with the lowest price per square feet. Now let's go ahead and check how the maximum actually looks like. Okay, which is this one. Let's go ahead and take a close look here. So actually what we need to do is we need to replace this number 10 with this number here. Okay, this is the only difference. So copy this one, paste it here right now, and this should be equal. Okay, let's go ahead, and it's in New York, and we know that New York is very, very cheap. Uh, sorry, sorry, very, very expensive. This is what I wanted to say, and here we also can make this cross check. We can just copy this one back to truda.com, paste it here. Okay. And now this is actually our result, but you see here, this does not make sense for us. Okay. It's just one square feet and yep, this is either a mistake or I don't know. So for me, this does not uh, look good at all. Okay. To be honest, I mean, these pictures are, I think they are real pictures, but um, the provider of the data maybe made a mistake here okay so one square feet doesn't make sense at all that means this one we can easily go ahead and drop this result here okay so let me show you how we can achieve it actually we need to use the drop function so again we need to start with df combined and then drop okay and now inside this brackets here, we need to provide the index. Okay. And in this example, this is our index. All right. And remember we have 6,246 rows. Okay. And now we want to go ahead and drop this index here. So copy it, paste it here. And now let's go ahead. Oh, sorry. First of all, we also need to overwrite the old data frame. Okay. Don't forget it. So it's df combined equals to this expression here. Okay. All right, let's run it. Okay, no error message. And now remember, we have 6246. If I run the cell again, voila, we have one row um, less than a few seconds ago. Okay. And if I right now rerun this cell where, where we want to check this number, let's see. And now it's empty, okay, because this entry was actually deleted and you can do it simply with the drop function. Okay, so this is it. Again, you have different um, possibilities how to get rid of outliers or of rows, which does not make sense to you, okay? So this should be actually a, sh a short overview for your um, own projects, how you can start and search for outliers. You know, also can go ahead and take a look at different columns, okay? Like bedrooms, bathrooms, and so on, okay? But this should be just a short overview. I don't want to go too much into detail to this all outlier stuff, but this should give you actually, yeah, let's say a brief overview how you can approach this topic. Okay, so for now, let me just go ahead and um, actually store the new data frame inside the Excel because now we have invested a lot of time to clean all this data 
and now it's easy for us to to actually hand this over to the PostgreSQL database, okay? Because now it's also database readable. We have integers. We can use different operators to this whole data frame, okay? And this is actually what we wanted to achieve. So let me go ahead and store everything inside the Excel file. So df combined dot to Excel. Here I want to provide the name. Let's say it's the clean underscore data dot xlsx, okay, and the index is false. Okay, guys, so congratulations. Now this part is actually over. We have actually successfully cleaned our data frame, okay, and all in all, we have more than 6,000 results or 6,000 rows. And in the next section of this course, we are going to answer real life questions based on our scraped and cleaned data frame. Okay, so thank you very much. Stay tuned and I see you in the next section.